Good morning. Oh, it's so good to have the bells playing. And uh, welcome, everyone. We're so glad you're all here. And um, it's just wonderful to be together. Um, I have a few announcements for the greater good as we gather together. First, a reminder that we are still taking poinsettia dedications and orders. If you'd like to dedicate a poinsettia in honor or memory of someone, there are envelopes in the pews if you are here. And if you are worshiping with us remotely, just call the church office and they, we will take care of you there. I want to give a special thanks. You can see we are very decked out and we are cleaned and fixed up all around the property. So I want to thank, I hope this is everybody, Linda, Hank, Chris, Chris, Harry, Sandy, Tim, Raymond, Beth, Elaine, Kathy, Ellie, and Rhea. Did I get everybody? Sandy and Harry, just thank you all so much. It looks fabulous. <coughs> we are blessed indeed, and we are decorated inside and out here. Uh, um, let us uh, continue in worship with our, our full welcome. Welcome to Longwood Hills Congregational Church. We are an inclusive spiritual community seeking to live out a more just and generous Christianity. We think faith is less about doctrines and dogmas demanding total agreement, but a life to be lived, enjoyed, and given away to others. What unites us is a growing awareness that life is a gift and love is the point. We welcome the entire human family regardless of age, race, creed, physical or mental abilities, marital or economic status, gender identity, or sexual orientation. So if you are curious and have come to see, if you are tired and have come to rest, if you are grateful and have come to share, if you are on a journey and have come to grow, if you are wounded and have come to heal, or if you're joyful and have come to shine, welcome home. We're glad you're here. Will you rise if you are comfortable and we will join in our mission statement. Which I don't know by heart yet. <laughs> a test. <laughs> all right, yeah, y'all just start it, please. We exist to welcome all people into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Christ. The people with the faith that works in real life and sends us in service into the world in Jesus' name. Amen. No, no, amen. All right, there, there's a, a, a whole sermon. There's a whole sermon here. In that, in, in that you're <laughs> preaching the mission statement to us. All right. Let's worship. All right. shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take
set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory. Who rules the nations with truth and justice? Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. Sing it out, this is amazing. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, that you would lay down your life, that I would be set. I sing for all that you've done for me. Sing Gloria.
Come, O oh, come, Emmanuel. Sing it out. Oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel. Oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel. Oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel. Savior of this world, the long-awaited promise you foretold, and right the wrongs that man has done. We pray your glorious kingdom come. Sing rejoice. 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 shall come to thee, O Israel. Oh, amen. Uh, let us pray this morning. Lord God, we are here to worship you as we kick off this Advent season. We long to know you more, and we await the arrival and the celebration of the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. In all things we do throughout this season, let us totally focus on you, what you would want us to know from you, and have you guide us in all things. Let us have hope, peace, love, joy, and Christ in our hearts. Through your son Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Amen. Be seated as we continue to sing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
It helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is even beyond our vision. We accept in this lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that the kingdom of always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the Christ Church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are all about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing they hold a future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capacities. We cannot do everything, and there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something, and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not the master builder, ministers, and not the Messiah. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Let us pray. Holy God, we light this candle filled with a hope for our future and the future of all creation. We ask and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us sing together our response. Candles warm and bright Fill the world with radiant light Help us find the promised one Guide us to the child who will come Let us come together in prayer, remembering our needs and the needs of our world and our gratitudes and the gratitudes of our community. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we enter into this holy season. We enter into a time when we are surrounded by preparation some preparation which is busy and noisy and active and bright. Some preparation which we do deep inside, which forces us to look into the darkness as well. We ask God your, your presence with us as we prepare. We ask God your presence with those who need your presence you to surround them. We lift up those who struggle, who struggle with illness of body and illness of mind, who struggle with injury of body and injury of spirit. We ask you surround those who minister to your people, whether it be as first responders, as those who serve in hospitals and, and on the streets. We ask you surround those who work in service industries, especially this season, and for all of us as we work among them and walk among them. And we give ourselves to you, God, in this morning of prayer praying together as you taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If the children would like to come forward, and we'll grab a few of these, these little benches. Ned, can you help pull, bring up a couple of benches for them? Yeah, we'll give. There we go. Hi, everybody. Do we have enough for everybody? Yeah. Oh, we totally do. All right. Okay, so I'm going to show you. It's good to see everybody. Hi. I'm Pastor Stephanie, for those I haven't met yet. Okay, so this is a game we play when you're very little. Okay, so we go... What do we say when I pull it off? Peekaboo! Peekaboo! Now, when I go like this, am I gone? No. When I go like this, you can see me. Now, I have a very little grandson. He's really little. And when I go like this, he doesn't know that I'm still there. You know, like you guys are old enough to know if I go like this that I'm still there. But when you were babies, babies, if I went like this, you would think I disappeared. Okay? And at some point, we learn, when we get to be big kids, that even if we put this up, we're still back there. Well, I was thinking that God's kind of like that. That, you know, sometimes you can't really see God like you can see me or you can see other people, right? Right? You can't, like, see God, like, with your eyes. But God is still there. God is sitting right there next to Jenna, right where her feet are. Can you see God there? N I, not like with your eyes, but you can see God. We can see God. How can we see God? With your eyes. Like, you can see God, like, like, look at all those people there, okay? You can see God because they're going to they're gonna wave to you now. And they're going to say, God loves you. And you can see God if you help somebody. You can see God when we share food with people that are hungry. We can see God in the toy box that's out there when we share toys with other kids. So I just want us to remember that even if we don't see like a person sitting here, that you see God all the time, and I want you to remember that. Let's pray together. God, we thank you that you never hide from us, that you are always with us, no matter what. Help us always to see you. Amen. Okay, you can, uh, you can go back to your seats, or go back to your uh, children's church, and somebody can help move the benches. Thank you so much. Thank you to my stage hands. <laughs> so last week, I talked to you about the, um, the chair that was in my office. So I'm going to continue with my series of stuff in the pastor's office. Okay? So one of the things in my office, I hope you can see this from here, is these two pictures. Okay? Pictures of my pet rabbits. So this is Prudence, who is no longer living with us, but she, she was our first bunny. And this is Freddie, who has a real attitude and still lives with us. Okay? And I was thinking that these represent 
gifts that God has given us in the past, but that we still are thankful for, and gifts that God is giving us in the present. And we are thankful for all of these, and they make us want to share more. Will you join me in prayer before the ushers come forward to give thanks for these gifts that we share, remembering our past gifts and sharing in our present gifts. Let's pray. God, we thank you for all you have always given us and for all that you continue to give us. And we share in that gratitude as the ushers come forward and as we share in other ways from our homes. Thank you, God, and bless these gifts. Amen. the Lord God Almighty reigns. Alleluia. Alleluia. For the Lord God Almighty
This morning's scripture lesson is taken from selected verses of the 33rd chapter of the book of Jeremiah. While Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. This is what the Lord says, He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made the people of Israel and Judah. In those days at the time, whoop, that's called an oop, I am not the Lord. Backtrack, backtrack, backtrack. <laughs> Would have been shorter, but anyway. Call to me, and I will answer you and tell you a great and unsearchable things you do not know. This is what the Lord says. You shall about this place. It is a desolate waste without people or animals. Yet in the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem that are deserted, inhabited by neither people nor animals, there will be heard once more the sounds of joy and gladness, the voices of the bride and bridegroom, and the voices of those who bring thank offerings to the house of the Lord, saying, Give thanks to the Lord Almighty, for the Lord is good. His love endures forever. For I will restore the fortunes of the land as they were before, says the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In this place, desolate and without people or animals, in all its towns, there will again be pastures for the shepherds to rest their flocks. In the towns of the hill country, of the western foothills, and of the Negev, in the territory of Benjamin, in the villages around Jerusalem, and in the towns of Judah, flocks will again pass under the hand of the one who counts them, says the Lord. These days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line, and he will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. Here ends the reading of the lesson. Thank you so much. So this is our first Sunday of Advent, and um, we are going to go through this year the, the four themes that we often remember when we light the candles. And today, we're talking about hope. So what does hope look like? And I like alliteration, so I thought I'd call today's sermon Hope in the Hills. And we're going to think a little bit about the hills of biblical times, Longwood Hills, and hills in our own journeys in life. So let's think a little bit about what, what does hope look like? In Jeremiah's world, there were issues. And yet God was still providing hope. See, Jeremiah had been predicting disaster and disaster and more disaster. He's been walking around with the, you know, the, the end is near sign, you know, the sandwich board, you know, the end is near. And indeed, the end is coming near for them. He's in prison. People are dying. 
there's going to be exile and loss of identity and loss of home and, and everything's going to go wrong, basically. And just as things are just starting to get bad, he could be out there saying, I told you so, I told you this is going to go bad. But instead, when things started getting really bad, he started talking about hope. Now, hope doesn't mean that bad stuff isn't going to ever happen again, because it will. Hope means that God promises that God will be there. God promises things that we may not see with our eyes, but that we can still recognize inside. God promises us that God will be Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Emmanuel means God with us. God is with us even in the midst of difficulty. God does not desert us. God was with the people back in those old biblical times. And when they cried, God wept. And when they suffered, God hurt. And when they felt alone, God remained there with them. God gave them things that they didn't understand for the future. And no matter what, God remained Emmanuel, God with us. Now, God with us doesn't mean that God fixes everything. Sometimes God fixes things. But, but sometimes stuff still happens. And I think sometimes we, we get this idea in our minds that if God shows up, then everything gets better, that everything's fixed. And life doesn't work that way. And we probably all know somebody who prayed for God to show up when things were going wrong, and then things didn't get perfect, and so then they gave up on God. Either said God doesn't exist because things didn't get perfect, or I'm mad at God because things didn't get perfect. And we may have all sort of felt that sometimes. But God with us means that God is with us. And that somehow, that's enough. And that is what the prophet was proclaiming in the scripture we heard. And we need that because in our lives, in our community, in our world, there's also issues. I mean, maybe not in your life, but in my life, there are issues. In our hills, we have prophets who tell us what we should think about. We have prophets of doom and prophets of hope and prophets who get on any cable news station and tell us that they know what the truth is and it's hard to know who to listen to sometimes. And in truth, in recent years, we've had tremendous pain and tremendous loss as a world, as a nation, as a congregation, as a town. Just like today's scripture doesn't list all the pain that was going on, I don't need to tell you all the issues in our world. We know what they are. We know that there's pain and that pain hurts and that it's strong. We know that there are things we have to deal with. The powers what the Apostle Paul called the powers and principalities, the powers of evil or sin or Satan or whatever it is you want to call it, tries to tell us that pain is too strong, that we can't get past it. Tries to tell us that the bad things are stronger than the good things in the world. But they're not. Emmanuel, God with us, tells us that even when we hurt, God's presence is enough. That 
God's goodness is greater than any problem we're going to face. That no matter what happens, love will always be stronger than hate. Good will always be stronger than evil. Inclusion always beats exclusion. Unity is always greater than division. Justice will beat out oppression. And peace is always stronger than fighting. Now this doesn't mean that the issues aren't present, but that God's presence is always bigger than them. And we need to remember that when we face the hills and the hope in our own journeys. Because often I think we strive to fix things. I mean, maybe not all of us are fixers, but we, we strive to sort of overcome the pain and overcome the, the, the hurts that we face and overcome evil, and we try to do it all on our own. And we, 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 we strive to fix any loss or health or financial issue or identity issue or plans being broken or injustices or injuries. We try to do it all on our own. And we stress and we strive and we're scared and we're scarred. And we can't figure out how to make things right. Hope means that God promises to show us what we can't figure out. In the biblical translation, the message God promises in this passage to show us what we can't figure out on our own. God shows up and shows us what we can't figure out on our own. We try to fix. God says, hand it over. I'll do it. We try to be in charge. God, Jesus says, follow me. We strive and we pull and we strain and we, we run around and we, we do and we do and Jesus says, take a minute. Just take a minute. Jesus offers this, this hope, and, and, and we don't always know how to trust it because it's, it's not in our nature to just let go. But God calls us this Advent season to trust in God's presence and God's hope again and again and again. Hope means that we know God is here. Hope means that we trust in that presence. Hope means that we believe in that presence. You know, one of the things that I first saw when I came here was the, the believe sign that's, that's out by the driveway. Um, and when I first saw it, I'll admit, it reminded me a little bit of those signs. Have you seen those commercials of the people who are trying to be their parents and the guys like the, the, the insurance commercial and, and, and uh, you know, he's trying to get people to not become their parents? And, and at some point, there's like a, he asks them, you know, do you need a sign to live, laugh, and love? You know, and, and Ned and I always joke about some of those signs. And so when I first saw the belief sign, I said, oh, do I need a sign to believe? Well, no, I don't. I don't need a sign to tell me to believe. But that sign out there isn't for that. That sign out there is a courageous statement that says, I believe in the face of everything in the world that tells me not to. I believe. I know God's here in the face of everything else in the world that tells me that God is hidden away, and I'm like a kid who, in the peekaboo thing, who thinks that when I hold up the blanket of, of hurt, God goes away. I believe, and I have the courage to believe, when anything else tells me not to. All the presence and strength of God meet 
is, is here whether I believe it or not, but this Advent, I believe and I have hope, and that takes courage. Jeremiah's righteous branch is here, calling us to have hope. Jesus is not only our reason for hope, but our ability to believe in that hope. This Advent, may you be given that strength. May that hope be birthed anew in you. May you have the courage to hope and believe. As the band comes forward, I want to give you another, one more definition of hope. UrbanDictionary.com is sort of a, a snarky little dictionary um, in which people post their own definitions of things. Um, interestingly, in the last church I served, their... Um, the, the, the wall, the, the privacy walls or the, the walls in their thing didn't allow me to pull up UrbanDictionary.com because somehow it thought it was too, too dirty in some way to be pulled up in a church. I don't find it that way, but I, I'm going to dare to share with you a definition from UrbanDictionary.com. The definition of hope there gives hope a female quality and says that hope is the coolest girl you'll ever know, meet. She's also the best friend you'll ever have and will stay with you forever. Don't mess with her because she knows how to throw a comeback. When you meet Hope, hold on to her forever because she's a rare treasure. She's someone who can be trusted. Trusted with your, her, your life. She's amazing. And the most amazing thing about her it's her tendency to love. She's a girl who will always be there when you need her. Never let her go. Amen. Let's stand as we prepare to leave this morning. I had to get my pitch somehow on this song. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Oh, the sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. And bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, Let's sing.
it feels like there's something between us. And, and I'm, I'm a big fan of masks right now. I, you know, believe me. But I want you to know, even if you're like this, God knows. God sees you. God recognizes you, no matter what. Go and share the confidence of that recognition. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Bling like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your